No visit to the Sichuan region would be complete without experiencing a formal banquet. For what I think is one of the ultimate Chinese dining experiences, we're going to have a multi-course meal that I hope will blow your mind. To give Steve his first taste of fine dining, Sichuan style, Fuchsia has chosen the restaurant of Yu Bo, one of China's most talented culinarians. The parade of little dishes, many rich in symbolism, and presented in elegant serving pieces, leaves no doubt that the Sichuan table ranks among the world's most sophisticated. So Steve, here we are in Yu Jia Chu Fang, Yu's Family Kitchen, or Yu's Cuisine, which is one of the most extraordinary restaurants in Chengdu, and it's run by the outstanding chef Yu Bo, who I've known for many years. And um, I brought you here to experience a kind of high-level Sichuanese cooking, um, a real Sichuanese banquet. And Yu Bo's inspiration comes from the grand houses of the mandarins of the past, when um, literary gentlemen would keep private chefs and amaze their discerning gentleman friends to exquisite banquets. And Yu Bo is a very interesting chef because on the one hand, he has this great reverence for Chinese tradition and he's always researching ancient recipes and trying to do you know, classic dishes the old-fashioned way um, with a kind of perfectionism that is really rare these days in Chengdu. But he's also very innovative, so you find in his cooking a kind of mixture of old and new, which is very exciting. So we're going to start with a whole array of cold appetizers. As you know, it's very common for a Sichuanese meal to start with cold dishes. But at this banquet, he's presenting us with 16 small dishes. And um, in Sichuanese cuisine, they always say yi cai yi ge, bai cai bai wei, which means each dish has its own style and a hundred dishes have a hundred different flavors. So of these 16 dishes, each is made with a different ingredient in a different form with a different flavor. This much is, is kind of traditional, but what he's done, which is really unusual, is that he's made all these appetizers with vegetarian ingredients. Because Chinese banquets traditionally are about extravagant, um, you know, unusual ingredients. So lots of meat and fish and maybe rare creatures and so on. But um, Yu Bo said to me once, you know, anyone can make a delicacy out of lobster or abalone. I like to show that it can be done with the most simple of ingredients. So here to have a whole vegetarian um, set of starters at a banquet is something really unusual. You know, although the character of Sichuanese cuisine is in these very bold and spicy flavours, it's also in variety. So you never have a meal where everything is spicy. You always want to have some sort of delicately flavoured, you know, vegetables and refreshing things to accompany the, the strong taste. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, these are like calligraphy brushes. And uh, do you know, want to know what to do with them? <laughs> so, um, take, take a brush and then dip it into the ink. And that's a typical Chinese traditional brush stand. Okay. <laughs> How was that for an experience? It was it was different. It was very different. A great experience, I mean. So it's using a traditional um, Sichuanese layered pastry, very fine pastry, and you can see it even has almost hair-like folds mm -hmm. that look like brushes. And inside there's minced meat, minced pork, dipped into tomato sauce. And um, you know, ordinary people would be using black ink to, um, to dip their calligraphy brushes, but this is red ink, which was used by imperial officials to sign death warrants. So um, it's a bit of a joke. And this is one of the things about Chinese haute cuisine is that it's full of wit and creativity. There's game playing. So something here, you know, something that, you know, looks like something else and you can't believe <laughs> what you're yeah, food. Yeah. So this is a, like a farmhouse chicken, free range chicken, and, and gan, uh, gan ban, which means sort of dry toss. It's a cold dish, but instead of using chili oil, it's got dried chili, etc., and pepper with these very fragrant little scallions. So these are little dumplings, but the skin of the dumpling is made from um, Chinese cabbage and they're filled with minced pork. 
So um, this is one of his specialities, which is a spicy mi liang fen, the rice jelly that we've seen in the market, um, cooked in a really bold, spicy Sichuanese sauce, but served with fresh abalone, again, a luxury seafood ingredient married with a kind of very humble ingredient. Um, and the abalone has been cooked with Sichuanese pickled vegetables. One thing about Sichuanese banquets and about Sichuanese food in general is that, you know, um, I mentioned the great diversity of flavours and this thing about a hundred dishes having a hundred different flavours, but also a uh, Sichuanese banquet should be a kind of journey with its highs and its lows. So you'll have some very strong flavour and then something very light to refresh the palate. And I just um, love the Yubo's tablewares because in a Chinese banquet it's meant to sort of delight all the senses. So... Um, it's not just about food, it's a kind of cultural experience. So Yubo and his wife, every year they go to Jingdezhen, which is the porcelain capital in eastern China, and uh, they buy these kind of reproduction of classic styles of porcelain, so that not only the food is delicious and beautifully presented, but everything it's served in is too. So Steve, this now is a riff on, on a traditional uh, Sichuanese delicacy, which is tea-smoked duck. Traditionally, the duck is smoked over tea and camphor wood, um, a the wood of a local tree. And um, normally you just have the duck as it is, but what Yubo has done here is hang some of the slices from a wooden frame normally used to hang your calligraphy brushes. And he served it with these little guokwe, and a guokwe is a Sichuanese flatbread. Normally they're much larger, and they're used as pockets for meat and vegetables and things like that. But because it's a banquet delicacy, he's made tiny versions, and he's serving them with all the trimmings that are used for things like peking duck and other sort of very rich meaty dishes at banquets. So here I'm going to take a slice of duck, dip it in the tian mian jiang, put it in the guokwe, with a little bit of the scallion, or Chinese leek and a little bit of cucumber. There you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the duck has amazing flavor. Yeah. <laughs> so this is um, home style. It's called like a thousand sheets. And it's these very thin pressed sheets of bean curd of tofu. Um, that have an almost cheese-like or noodle-like con consistency. And jia chang means that home-style flavour, so those bold, beany tastes with a bit of chilli. <laughs> this is really interesting. You can see this beautiful dish, kind of classical porcelain. And in it is a seasonal vegetable, which is we would call Swiss chards. Mm -hmm. Here they call it ox leather um, vegetable, niu pi cai. And this is hui guo niu pi cai, back in the pot, or twice cooked niu pi cai. And um, so what this is, it's basically the same dish as twice cooked pork, but made like a poor man's version, just with this very cheap vegetable, and presented beautifully. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> ah, this is a very traditional, this is a really spicy one. You're going to love this, Steve. <laughs> very mala, numbing and hot. Yeah, she said it's not really going to blow your head off. But what it is, is it's pork slices. And the, the name of the dish is shuiju pork slices, water boiled pork slices, um, which sounds like a very mild thing. And the joke is that actually it's covered in this sizzling chili and Sichuan pepper oil. <laughs> And with this, as with so many um, Chinese dishes, you don't actually eat all the oil in the sauce. So pick out the meat and enjoy the flavor. Mm. You're looking at my face. <laughs> it's got a little bit of heat to it. Mm. It's good. And this method pork. in which the pork is cooked in water and then covered with the spicy oil. So it gives it this beautiful silky tenderness. And also underneath, there's some crunchy vegetables that cut the richness of that pork. Well, this is really interesting. This is a, a seasonal wild vegetable called godiara, which I've never tried in all these years in Sichuan. And um, again, what he's done is take something that might be a sort of you know, peasant food, a poverty food, and made it into something beautiful with these very fine silvery threads of scallion around the edge. Very interesting. So that dish is just blanched briefly. 
and then bam, mixed like a salad with some spicy seasonings. Yeah, so Steve, so one, one thing you'd expect at a really fine Chinese banquet is to have some exotic ingredients. And so this is something from distant southwest of China, from Yunnan, a very unusual route. Um, they call these things kind of collectively Shenzhen Highway, sort of treasures from the mountains and flavors of the seas. And that's used to describe these kind of rare wild plants and kind of seafood and other exotica. So here we are, this is an example of that kind of, of food. Roasted? Mm. It tastes like it's dried or? It's kind of um, slowly deep fried, I mean, deep fried at low temperature till it's really, really Quick crisp. crisp yeah. But it has that amazing sort of a slight sweetness and a slightly honeycomb feeling. And this is um, the tenderest tips of bamboo shoot with um, spring onion oil and what they call an ox liver mushroom, which is a very um, very highly prized mushroom, which has a really kind of meaty texture. Look at this beautifully presented. I know, it's just gorgeous. A little piece we of We didn't mushroom. see any of these mushrooms at the, the market. No. Yeah, these are more exotic mushrooms, so they're not the, the sort of everyday ones. This is a little bit this is these amazing. <laughs> and, and if you, the, f the amazing thing about these is if you touch wow. them, they it's even prickly. Like, it's like little fur, yeah. Yeah. They have about 110 little spikes, and each one of them is hand cut with a pair of nail scissors into the dough. <laughs> so before it's steamed. So. Wow. Anyway, careful not to prickle the inside of your mouth. <laughs> Mm. Um, this is another wild, this is a wild fungi, fungus from Yunnan. So she says, smell it first. Very unusual. Amazing, actually, that smell, isn't it? Cooked with a little chili. So you're, in this one, you, you don't need to eat the chili. You can just eat the mushroom. This is, um, it's made of fish, a sort of little fish cake. And you can see that the carrot and the also and lettuce are cut into that same lucky shape as well. And another sort of classical style of porcelain um, for the bowl in which it's served. So this is a fish soup with the little tips of pea shoots. Lovely delicate thing to finish with. In Sichuanese cooking, you, you um, very often have the soup at the end to sort of cleanse the palate after all the bold flavors. Mm. This is um, home style, what they call red soup noodles, which is to say that it's with a really rich broth with this wonderful Sichuan pepper and chili oil on top. Um, but you don't really eat the oily broth, you just take the noodles out of it. <laughs> so this is um, crisp on the outside and soft and ran on the inside. Mm. And it's covered in that, um, that um, roasted soybean flour. <laughs> the final, the last dish <laughs> after about 30 something dishes. <laughs> she said, what vegetable is this made from? You'll have to guess. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Tomato? Yeah. Tomato. So it's tomato one. All right. 